I'm Carrie Peters, a recognized thought leader in the Microsoft Dynamics community and a Microsoft MVP for business applications. Welcome to the Get Your New View podcast. Keep listening to learn how we work with frustrated Business Central and NAV users who struggle to use their system and find the answers that they need. We teach them to truly understand how the system can support their business processes to make immediate and lasting improvements. As a result, they get more done in less time, make better business decisions, and even love their system. I'm Carrie Peters, and in this session, I'd like to talk with you about mastering microlearning techniques. At NuView Strategies, we believe that adult learning techniques are essential for effective training of adult corporate learners. It's estimated that adults lose 70% of what they have learned only 30 days after they've had training. It's impossible to completely solve that issue, but we're constantly on the hunt for new methods that are more interesting and address the issues of adult retention and attention span. And I think that microlearning is a part of the solution for that. If you haven't heard about microlearning before, this particular presentation is going to explore the latest trends in microlearning, uh, including its benefits, design considerations for microlearning techniques, and best practices for creating effective microlearning techniques. It's really quite revolutionary when you think about it. This is really just a learning approach that's been designed for the modern learner who seeks solutions that are flexible, mobile, and personalized. Microlearning delivers bite-sized and focused content that can be easily and quickly digested by learners, and it really makes it an ideal learning approach for the modern learner who is limited for time. In particular, we know that our adult learners are distracted and they're busy. So when we deliver bite-sized and focused content that they can pick up in a moment while they're waiting for a report to run or in line or running some type of an errand, and it helps to continually reinforce the things that they've learned in other ways, it becomes a very effective learning tool. It's also flexible and mobile. So if you think about this, we're not just sitting at the desktop to learn our information with a set of headphones on. We need to be able to allow our learners to access content anytime and anywhere and on any device. And it really has to be portable and using de devices that they're used to using regularly for all sorts of other things to manage their lives. It certainly is learning that needs to be personalized to meet the specific needs and preferences of individual learners. When it's more personalized, it's more engaging and more effective. There are a lot of benefits to microlearning and improved retention is only one of them. More engagement, higher performance are other benefits that are included with this and it can be very cost effective and scalable for much larger groups. Microlearning has been shown to improve retention specifically by breaking down complex information into bite-sized chunks that are easier to remember. When I think about bite-sized chunks, think of clump of grapes, where we have individual grapes that make up the entire clump. Those individual grapes are the bite-sized chunks that we're going to ingest in our learning process to be able to focus on what we're learning and to retain that information a little bit at a time. It certainly increases engagement by using interactive and multimedia content. It can improve performance by providing quick and targeted learning opportunities that can be applied immediately to a person's job. So how do we design effective microlearning experiences? How do we envision what this new type of training format looks like? Creating effective microlearning experiences can require very careful planning and design. The first step in designing an effective microlearning experience is to start with defining clear learning objectives. This is no different than any other type of training technique. This helps to focus the content and ensures that learners achieve the desired outcomes. The next thing to consider when designing microlearning experiences is the, the format and the delivery method. It's really crucial for the success of a microlearning experience that format and delivery method involve understanding who the target audience is, who is it who's going to be ingesting this training material, what is the learning environment, and what technology is available. 
Incorporating interactivity on top of this is really key to creating engaging and effective microlearning experiences. So when you think about bite-sized microlearning experiences that can be directed at our target audience using the learning environments and available technology to us today, think about things like texting. What could we do from a learning standpoint to help people through a series of texts to understand a new concept or to retain information that they've learned previously. It certainly can include quizzes or scenario simulations or interactive type of scenarios among many other examples. Let's dig in a little bit more to learning objectives because this is really where the design of this type of training all starts. Specific learning objectives are clear and concise descriptions of what the learners are expected to achieve after they've completed a learning activity. These should be aligned with the overall learning goal and the business goal of the training being designed. These learning objectives need to be measurable. Measurable learning objectives are ones that can be measured or assessed in some way, either through a test or a quiz or a practical exercise. And it's really important for evaluating the effectiveness of the learning program. Relevant learning objectives are the ones that are aligned with the learner's needs and interests as well as the business goals. It needs to be relevant to the learner's job role and responsibilities. And this can be particularly motivating for the learner because it applies to what their job is right away and they understand the reason for the training and they can relate to the need to go through this to improve whatever it is that they're trying to improve. The last thing about learning objectives is they have to be achievable. They have to be realistic and they have to be attainable within the given time frame that they have for the learning. They should certainly challenge the learners, but we can't overwhelm them. Once we've selected and defined learning objectives, the next thing to focus on is deciding what the right format and delivery method is. There's lots of different formats that are available to us. We have videos, podcasts, quizzes, infographics are a great type of micro learning. And it's important to choose the right format that suits the learners the best. We're really focusing in on texting as a micro learning technique right now at New View Strategies. And we've come up with some very interesting things that we think will apply specifically to the learners in our industry. Micro learning can be developed through various methods such as uh, mobile apps and LMS learning management systems and even social media platforms. And it is important to choose the right delivery method that ensures the learners can access the micro learning content anytime and anywhere. And don't forget too, we're talking about multiple generations of learners at this point. We can't focus on the technology and platforms that only experienced generations are used to. We need to start moving into younger generations type of learning platforms where they relate, they use that, it keeps up with the speed of how they interact with technology, really encourages them to participate in that learning because it's something that they're already familiar with and comfortable with. It communicates in the same ways that they're used to communicating. I heard recently on a radio show I was listening to, they took a, a quiz of Generation Z and they asked them how many of them had ever answered their telephone. And they got a very low percentage. I think it was something like 15% or less. And this was interesting to me because I know that I prefer to text and I really don't like to pick up the phone. And I know that a number of uh, my friends and family are the same way. But to think that with these younger generations that this has moved to not really seeing a necessity for a phone, that knowing that interaction through text is perfectly sufficient and can get the job done and that answering the phone is a nuisance. That's a great example of the right format and the right delivery method that if we choose something that's older and those younger generations can't relate to it, they're going to have a really hard time learning what we're serving up to them. One of the big keys to engaging learners and enhancing their retention of the material is interactivity. So how do we get people to interact with something that is 
not necessarily with another person in a classroom. How can we make this interactive? There's three things that you can focus on here. The first one is gamification. I'm sure you guys have all heard about gamification at this point, but I think sometimes we forget about gamification in professional corporate level learning. It's really an effective way to incorporate interactivity into micro learning as well as any other type of training. By adding game elements to the learning experience, such as assigning points, badges, and uh, putting people on a leaderboard, learners are motivated to engage and retain information better. And don't forget that with adult learners, a spirit of competition is a great incentive for people to learn because a lot of people are very motivated by competition. Gamification and even awarding prizes, that kind of thing is a great way to be able to get people to just have a more fun time with the learning. And we're not just reading a textbook and listening to a lecture. Some of it is a bit of play and a chance to move and use your brain in a little bit different way. Simulations is a great way for learners to apply what they've learned in a safe environment. They're more effective in developing skills and decision-making abilities when they have a scenario that fits more closely to what it is that they do on a regular basis. Having those role-based scenarios in some type of a simulation is a great way for them to translate what they've learned to what they do in a place where they can experiment. And it's okay for them to be wrong and for them to try things so they can understand why they're doing something. Scenario-based learning is an approach where learners are presented with a real-world problem and they're asked to solve it. So this is a little bit different than a simulation because this approach helps learners to retain the information better and apply it to real-life situations because they're presented with a specific scenario that's kind of like a puzzle that they need to solve. So a simulation might be a mimicry, right, where we're repeating the steps that are done for some type of a scenario. A scenario-based learning really is like a puzzle. So when we have this type of problem, what are the things that we're going to do to solve it? It's just a way to apply thinking in a different way. And this is a great thing for small groups as well as individuals uh, who might present their solution back and having discussion with that group about the solutions and whether people agree or disagree with the solution is a great way to engage people in this learning to help them to be interactive in the learning instead of sitting back and observing. So when we create effective micro learning, we have a few things that we need to think about. Micro learning should be short and focused and it needs to have a clear objective and a limited scope. These need to be small experiences that are either repeated over time or expanded over time. Keeping something short and focused makes it easier for the learners to engage with the content and to retain what they've learned. We know already that it should be interactive and engaging, and we need to have activities and assessments that keep learners actively involved in the learning process. Again, we can include quizzes, simulations, other interactive elements, whatever we can do to allow engaging interactive activity to keep our learners moving in their minds, help them with retaining their focus by allowing them to switch focus more frequently where they don't have to drill in and listen to a long lecture, that type of thing, where they can consume some of the training in one way and then participate through interactive and engaging activities. We certainly know that micro learning needs to be aligned with business goals. So we need to focus on the skills and knowledge that are most critical to the success of the organization. So we're not just playing games and we're not just doing all of these things that sometimes we have done in training that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. We need to make sure that that micro learning is relevant and that it provides real value to the learners. We know from our example of the, the clump of grapes that micro learning is most effective when it's delivered in small and focused chunks. So what does that mean? I think of the optimal length and duration of micro learning as something that's no longer than five or 10 minutes. And as we go forward in time, that number keeps shrinking. If you think about things like TikTok and all of the different shorts that you see out there in social media, this is micro learning. This is a great example. And those are less than a minute. If you think about 
Twitter, before it was X. That was a an opportunity to communicate in a really short, enforced format for quite a while, where we only had a few characters to communicate a concept. The optimal length and duration of microlearning does vary depending on the topic and the audience, but generally we're shooting for something no longer than five or 10 minutes. We do know that we need to personalize microlearning. It has to be relevant to the job roles and tasks that our learners are doing. So personalization and relevance are two key things to engaging those learners and enhancing retention. Personalization really involves tailoring the learning content to meet the needs and the preferences of the individual learners. And it also allows them to learn at their own pace and in their own way. When we make microlearning relevant in addition to personalized is important because that relevance allows them to apply what they've learned to real world situations. This is the translation between the learning experience and the real world things that they do in their jobs. We know that we need to provide learning content that is specific to our learners' job roles and tasks, and that that can be immediately applied in the workplace. And as long as we do that, it'll be successful. One of the last things that we need to do when we talk about microlearning, just like when we talk about other training, is we need to assess the outcome of the learning. When we assess learning outcomes, when we measure the effectiveness, we are going to ensure that learners have gained the intended knowledge and skills. Traditionally, quizzes and tests are commonly used to assess outcomes and to measure the level of knowledge and skills gained by the learners. They can be used to evaluate both comprehension, did they understand, and retention, did they hang on to that information over the passage of time. I also would say that surveys and feedback are important tools for assessing and gathering feedback from the learners. This certainly is a great way to evaluate how effective the microlearning was and to identify areas for improvement. And this is something that we should be doing with all training techniques is looking for that feedback from our learners so that we can continue to improve, adjust that training for relevance over time. Overall, I'm excited about microlearning, and I really think that this is going to be a learning technique that we'll see used more and more, and in particular when applying it to the corporate learning environment, I think we'll begin to see quite a bit of success with helping people to retain the information that they've learned through this learning technique. We'd love to hear from you. I'm Carrie Peters. We'll open things up for questions again. If you guys have some questions about microlearning and you want to put that in the chat, go ahead. And we'll give yeah. everybody a little bit of time. Carrie, I just have kind of a follow-up question for you. First of all, I, I would like to say that I'm shocked by the statistic of the 15% of Gen Z having answered a phone, but I think based on some experiences I have, maybe it doesn't shock me. I think I've never had a statistic put on that before, though. So that was that was very interesting to me. And I think, especially in the current age, we just have so many things being thrown our way that it's hard to focus, you know, too much time on any certain thing. So I'm actually very interested in the micro learning by text. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering if you can explain a little bit more about how that works. And then specifically, you know, in the business that we're in of software and training and things like that, how can something like that apply to what we do? Yeah, so at, at NewView, we do all kinds of training in all different formats, but we really haven't moved into micro learning in text yet. And I've actually been looking at a couple of uh, platforms that help to administer micro learning by text. And there's three different scenarios that we're going to be incorporating into our training, either into existing training or just new training programs on their own. And the first one is really just kind of a, a scheduled training or a drip training. So each week, um, whatever topic we're talking about, there'll be some small thing that comes out by text that either delivers that information in the text or gives them a link to other micro learning sources that they can click on or they could choose between a couple of them. So just something that regularly delivers that um, information using that topic to them. Another one is really a question and response where the learning is happening in the form of a question just to make people think. So, you know, asking people about, you know, what's your, your biggest challenge when you're processing accounts payable and giving them some choices, right? So they can select those choices and then based off of those choices, a response comes back to them with micro learning that addresses that particular challenge. 
And then a third one, Kim, one of our co-founders, affectionately likes to call the monkey wrench text. Um, and I think we are going to incorporate this into our next consultants accelerator. Um, they have a, a capstone project, which they start on at the beginning of the course, and they they build uh, an implemented uh, instance of Business Central at the end. Uh, we're going to send them a monkey wrench each week so that it comes by randomly, it comes by text, and it's something like, oh, no, your customer has a new requirement that we hadn't considered. How are you going to incorporate this into your capstone scenario? where we try to simulate the types of surprises that we have as consultants with implementations and uh, making it be a little bit fun, but also challenging because it's a surprise, just like we have surprises in our jobs. Yeah, very cool. I'm excited and look forward to when we can start introducing that. And I hope that I can help come up with some of the monkey wrench texts. Absolutely, everybody does. <laughs> yep. All right. So we have a question from Dennis. Thank you, Dennis. Are there some favorite tools that NewView and others use for micro learning? Yeah. Carrie, you want to talk about Kahoot a little bit? I would love to talk about Kahoot. And then while I talk about this, if anyone else wants to respond in chat, um, we'd be very interested in hearing what others are using as well. So one thing that we use at the end of our training days is a tool called Kahoot. And there's many purposes for it, but we use it as an end of the day quiz. So we typically put like 10 questions that cover topics that we, you know, went through during that day. Maybe it's say about accounts payable. So um, we'll have everyone create a name. Usually we pick a fun name too, to kind of give it, you know, different little spin. So maybe it's your favorite Disney character is your name for the day. And the good thing about this too, is it doesn't make anyone feel bad if they're not performing well in the Kahoot because no one really knows who they are unless someone knows your favorite Disney character. But then we have, you know, the 10 questions. You get a score based on if you answer correctly and also how quickly you answer. So people get really, really into it and get really, really competitive, but it's just a fun way to end the day and also just to reinforce those concepts that we learned throughout the day. So I know we've actually seen this too traveling to conferences. We go to some of the vendor booths and they have cahoots and I love doing them. I think it's just, it's a very fun thing. And we know that our students look forward to our end of the day Kahoot. Yeah. I love that tool. Yeah. And I just had somebody at a conference recently ask if I was going to incorporate a Kahoot into my presentation <laughs> and I hadn't even thought about it. So I had to write one really quick, but um, I'll tell you another one of my favorites uh, while we're waiting to see if we have some questions from folks who are attending is uh, another one of our end of day rituals, which is the takeaway. And this particular exercise, we don't need any technology for it. It's just you and discussion. This is really intended to remind people of what they found valuable in the session and also to make it clear to everybody as a whole that other people are finding value in the training. Because we can get a little negative about training, right? Training takes up time and it takes us away from our jobs that, you know, nobody helps us to catch up with that work when we come back. So uh, reminding people of what they learned and what they got out of it that's going to save them time and reminding uh, other people through seeing what other people list is really a cool experience. And it gives everybody that kind of feel good feeling at the end of the session. It's like, wow, you know, not only did I find that uh, useful, but, you know, five other people in the room found that that was a really important thing as well. And as a result of that, they remember that thing just a little bit more because that exercise has laid more value on it. Well, and if you look a prime example, you asked me earlier after a previous session what my favorite new feature was. And I said the AR Role Center. And then two other people popped in the chat and I was like, oh, that's right, that one and that one. So it's like even, you know, I gave the presentation and I couldn't remember everything that I presented. So, yeah, I think that's yeah. a really good way of, of reinforcing those concepts. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much, Carrie, for that great session. I'm going to pause here just for a few seconds and give you guys a chance to scan the survey link. We always like to hear from you for our sessions on what's working and what else you would like to see in the future related to our training. Did your team ever really get good training to understand how to use your business software? Do you think you could use more features of your software if you just knew how? Are you frustrated with inefficiency that never seems to get better? Do you suspect that there just has to be a better way but you don't know what that is. We believe every company can benefit from increased efficiency and higher utilization of their software, and that it's possible to have fun while learning exactly how to do that. 
The experts at NewView Strategies work with frustrated Business Central and NAV users who struggle to use their system and find the answers they need. We teach them to truly understand how the system can support their business processes to make immediate and lasting improvements. As a result, they get more done in less time, make better decisions, and even love their system. Please contact us at getyournewview.com to get started.